Hello and welcome back to my workshop. My name is Robert. This video will be a follow-up to sharpening the end mill flutes. In this video I'm going to sharpen the end cutting faces. I'll do both a four flute and a two flute and try them out, see if they work when I've finished. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. This end mill has the geometry that we're going to try and grind on the end of the of this one here the key things here are these two edges must be in a straight line which cut right through the center point of the rotation otherwise it won't be end cutting one of the lands is longer than the other so that it overlaps the center point. The center will be here somewhere and that will guarantee that it will remove any pip. The first thing I'm going to do uh, is to grind this one back flat to get rid of all of this damage. It's far easier to do that than it is to try and gently tickle away at it until you get something that looks clean. The next thing then will be to put these clearance reliefs on here. Now these are about I think 40 degrees. That's a good enough angle to clean these back. These faces here, that one and this one here, these flat faces here need to be ground straight not cambered back as per the helix here. If they are ground back with an angle, then when you resharpen this thing in the future, the moment you take anything off this top edge, it will retreat from the center line, from the diameter, and the end mill will cease to be end cutting. So I'll flatten off the I'll flatten off the top of this on a bench grinder initially and then in the tool and cutter grinder just to save the wheel on the tool and cutter grinder and then I'll reinstate these relieves cleanly then work on the secondary relief and finally the primary relief is only a few wipes across the wheel just to put a small width of primary relief on it. For those of a sensitive nature, best to look away now. We have a freshly dressed wheel on the bench grinder and I'm just going to take the worst off, off of this end mill now. Well, it certainly needs attention now. I've taken the worst off and now I'm just going to put it on the tool and cutter grinder to get it flat and clean. This is the arrangement I use for sharpening the ends of the end mills. The fixture that was up here previously with the finger on it is now replaced with a little plunger which now engages in the holes in the collar here. So I have to set the end mill manually and again I'm going to use the height gauge in exactly the same way as I did before. It's still set on center height. This is at zero. Both of the, both of the angles on the three axis fixture are at zero. And I'm just going to set it so that the height gauge touches the tip of the edge of the end mill just back from the centre where I'm intending to grind to. Here's a bit more of a look at it. The height gauge is just going to contact 
just back from the tip it won't actually pass the tip there that will foul on it but it's just about the right height just back from the tip on the helix where I'm going to grind to and if I index the fixture round by 180 degrees the other flute comes up in exactly the same position just there so that's what I'll use to flatten the end and achieve the starting position for the cutting edges Right, let's bring you in for a closer look. And there we go. That's as much as I'm going to clean up. This last little bit will be removed anyway when I put the relief angle here. Both of the cutting tips have been cleaned up. So now we can start by putting the geometry back together. So here we are set up to grind these first 40 degree reliefs to form the cutting edges. This fixture has been rotated around so that the this axis is at 40 degrees to the horizontal. We have the indexing plunger underneath now. This, this orientation then means that we're grinding into the open space, otherwise we need to, everything would be flipped around and awkward. This axis is at zero, this is at zero, so we should be grinding in a straight line. The edge of the wheel has been previously dressed to make sure that that is going to be running true, so that we should be cutting on the entire periphery. So we're going to be mainly cutting on the periphery of the wheel, and a little bit on the side of the wheel. I haven't redressed the wheel yet. Uh, this is mainly roughing out at this stage, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to have to cut the two lands a different depth. So we'll cut the first one about three eighths of the way through, and then the other land on the other side when we index this around to the right position, if I can find the hole there, will be ground to about five eighths of the way across the wheel at least. And that will give us the asymmetrical pattern that we need to reach the centre to make it centre cutting. So off we go. I'm going to be grinding with the wheel going anti-clockwise this time. I'll point out that on this tool and cutter grinder, the spindle has a keyway. There is a key that runs through the two metal washers that hold the grinding wheel in place, so they cannot rotate. So the wheel can be rotated in either direction. There is no danger of the wheel spinning, undoing the nut and coming flying off. And in fact, the original the original uh, on-off switch nameplate had forward and reverse written on it, so it is designed to go both ways.
I'm not going to go in any further than that. That is short of where I need to be, but I'll set a zero on the dial. Then we'll give it some vertical feed and we'll come across. So I'm going to be putting on 0.2 millimetres, that eight down cut. And you'll hear the tone of the cup changing when it reaches the zero part. Let's get you in for a closer look. taking off a quarter of a millimetre of time now as it seems to be handling this fine. Just under halfway now, fitting in a quarter of a millimetre every time. You can see where this is cleaned up and it's stopping short of the tip. Tip is just over here. So this could go back a little bit and that will remove this little web between the two. 
but I don't want to get, take this back too far because if I do that it will no longer centre cut. So just a, a hair more off of this, this face here should be what I want. So we can see what we've achieved just there, rotating it around. It's not quite, not quite at the touching the, the edge there. Now the the little thin web between the two, I poked it with my fingernail, and it's just enough. I don't know whether you can just make out right in the middle of the screen the tiniest of dents. So that web was thin enough for me to break with a fingernail. So I think that's just pretty much bang on where it should be. I'll just point out it's still in this fixture. I'm not moving it out of this fixture until I've finished grinding it. So now I still have the same reference and now I can do the secondary reliefs on both sides and then finish up with a primary relief. So here's our setup for the secondary relief. For a freshly dressed wheel, only the front face, we're not going to be using the side again. I've got the flute horizontal um, at the end. I've got a 15 degree back rake on it. And I'm going to keep grinding until I'm close to the close to the edge, but not at the edge. Then I'll flip over 180 degrees, repeat on the other side, and then do some light cuts, taking a pass on one one flute, flip it over, same distance on the other one to make sure they're exactly the same length. Last point before I start grinding, I've got about one degree-ish um, rotation on the on this head here. So this is going to grind the middle slightly deeper in than it will the tips so the tips will be just and just proud this makes sure that it guarantees the cut on the tips That's now the two secondary reliefs ground to the same same nominal length. I'm now going to put on a small piece of a little bit of cut, about 0.04 millimeters. And that should be the secondary relief done. Must be a bit wobbly as it's handheld but you can see how much I've got left where I blued it up and there's just a tiny slither along each edge and now I'm going to do the primary relief 
which will be about eight degrees. One thing to be careful of though, doing the primary relief, uh, because we've got an angle on the cutting edge, if we, if we simply swipe right across the wheel, like that, we'll wipe out the opposite corner because everything's angled in very slightly. It was okay for the secondary relief because the angle is so slight that it misses the, it misses the far, far corner. But now with the primary relief, we have to just come in to the point, get it onto, get it onto center of the wheel first. All with everything turned off, obviously. And then I'm going to set the stops down here so that we can't go in any further than that. For the final pass of grinding, I'll probably be doing it freehand and being very careful not to, not to mess up the centre cutting point. But there isn't very much to come off for the primary angle. We're at about 8 degrees now. just here when it stops cutting. Just there. I haven't quite got to my stop. Stop. I haven't taken very much, less than a tenth of a millimetre. So I'm now going to set a zero, come out, rotate round by 180 degrees. Now, whilst it's still clear of the wheel, I need to reset the stop because this loop goes in further. past the 
previous setting by 0.04 millimeters. So I'll reset the stop to that, and I'm now going to around, and I'll do this manually. Just listening for that middle point where it stops cutting. sharpened. Let's get it out of the fixture and let's have a look at it. So here we are, this is the finished article. We have a 40 degree angle here and here. We have a 15 degree angle for the secondary relief here and the primary relief is 8 degrees. This land ex ex extends beyond centre and if I've got it right these two edges should form a diameter of this end mill and that's the two flute geometry done now for the non centre cutting four flute geometry as you can see there is a, a hole a relief in the middle where it won't cut all I'm going to be doing here is just dressing the secondary relief here very slightly to 15 degrees and then just touching up the primary relief very slightly just to get a sharp edge on each one sometimes when these are quite warm i've put a carbide uh, center drill in the lathe and re-drilled the center of this uh, if you're going to do that you do need to check what carbide you're going to be using because some things are specified to cut harder materials than others. Not all carbides are created equal. So you ideally need something that will cut close to or beyond 63 Rockwell in order to successfully drill these. So we need to set up the Four flute end mill with the flutes at the right angle in the fixture so that we get the grind we want. Now the height gauge is still set on centre height. The flutes do not necessarily pass through the centre in a four flute end mill. They're quite often offset. Now I will bring you around for a better view if I can get it in. It's difficult for me to see, let alone trying to get it on camera. But I'll show you what I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to achieve the corner of the flute being very, 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 very slightly higher than the centre. As I'm going to grind away, that flat line across the end is going to rotate very slightly. I'm not going to be taking off very much. But uh, let's see if we can get a better picture of this. There you can just about see 
You've got my finger for scale there. If I hold something white for contrast behind the end of the flute, which is damaged slightly, so it's not going to be a nice clean sharp point to, to gauge against, but it's very slightly higher than the middle point. It's not on centre height, uh, because that will give us a slightly peculiar sort of geometry to it. Sorry for the shaky hands, I'll have to go handheld to get in here to actually show you what I'm trying to show you. I've set a stop so you can see there's a gap there between the flute that's pointing down. This is the furthest that the end mill will travel to the left. So I'm not going to damage the tooth immediately round from the one I'm grinding. 15 degree secondary relief. Bring you around to have a good look at that. Again, all wonky and handheld, but uh, I've cleaned up the secondary relief there, right to the edge. And now I'm going to put a little primary relief on each on each flute. You can probably see about as much as I can. In fact, you've probably got a better view. The end stock for the travel on the table is the same as it was before. The cutter is about on centre height of the wheel. I'm now going for an 8 degree re relief angle. Let's get to it. That should be that. There we are, that's the end result. The blue areas were touched up first and finally just put a small land on each one. That should be ready to cut. Well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, as they say, so I've got the four fluter now in the mill. I've got a piece of, this is a bit of EN3 mild steel, not the nicest stuff to machine. Um, I'm going to be spinning at 800 RPM. I'll take 10 down. That should do.
it actually feels smooth. There's a lot of patterning in it. I will bring you in for a close look at that finish that it's produced. Well, there it is. That's what it's produced. It's, it's slightly rough. It's not the best I've ever done. Not particularly happy with that. Maybe I needed to take more off the ends. It didn't sound particularly smooth. Let's try the uh, two fluter. Same material, same feeds and speeds. Let's touch off and take a tenth out cut. did sound better. Let me bring you in for a close look at the finish. Well, there we are, that was much nicer. The finish is very smooth to the touch. Looks like the mill is trammed half decently as well because you've got the marks from both edges, leading and trailing. Um, yeah, very happy with that one. Let's just try cutting on the on the side flutes now and see what that works like. Again, about ten foul cut tips, and we are taking about an eighth of an inch. reasonable. Let's bring you in closer for a look. That's the finish it's produced. It's actually nice and smooth. It's about what I'd expect from an end mill. That's okay. So there we go. How to sharpen an end mill. Last test before I uh, bring this video to a close. So I said about making this end cutting. The question is, does it? Now I've cheated on this one. I have tried it, but I haven't modified it since I tried it. It's chattertastic. It's a 5 8 end mill. This is not a particularly big mill. So I'm going to turn the speed right down and let's see how bad it sounds and behaves. Quite a 
rough test for this mill. That's a 5 8 plunge cut into steel. Okay, albeit ordinary mild steel, but so it wasn't particularly nice sounding. Let's have a close look at it. And there's all the chatter marks, but it's cut right the way through to the center. Um, I dare say the hole is bigger than five eighths, judging by the way everything was bouncing around. As I said, it's not the world's most rigid mill, but uh, it's quite an aggressive cut. I'd have probably gone in with something much, much smaller initially and cleared most of the material away if I was doing this for real. But there we are. It certainly cuts right the way through to the centre. Mission accomplished. So there we are. That was uh, my take on sharpening end mills. I hope you found it useful. I've got these two usable end mills now. Granted the four flute could probably do with a bit more attention on the ends. It's not guaranteed that I actually cleaned up all of the, all of the four flutes. But the two fluter clearly works. I wouldn't plunge into steel with a big mill like this, not on my little uh, machine. But there we are. Thank you very much for watching.